Hi, and welcome to our channel. My name is Sarah. Um, my husband and I just recently purchased this land in the Midwest. We have a little under 10 acres, and we're very excited to take you along as we begin our first adventure, hopefully our last, in homesteading. Uh, we hope to produce as much food as we can through gardening and raising animals, and we also will be building our first home. Um, if this is something that you're interested in following along, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button, like and comment if you've gone through this process because Lord knows we will need your advice and help. But I'm going to go ahead and give you a tour today and I'm going to flip you around. Over here on the shared side of our property, um, this property was actually three 10 acre tracks. So from the Arborvitaes all the way back to that tree row, it actually runs towards a railroad track and all the way to the west side of the property where we have a tree row. All of the grass in between is ours. And the other section is back there next to the power poles. And then there is a third track that was sold, which starts about here and is on the other side of our H braces. We originally were going to start building right away on this property, but with the construction costs, and the material shortages, we decided it would be best to go ahead and wait a little bit because we weren't in a position to build right away. And now with the scarcity of materials, we decided we were gonna start working on things that would benefit us in the long run. So putting up this natural privacy screen was something that was really important to my husband and I, especially before we knew who was purchasing the other properties. We just wanted to have a pretty way, natural way to separate ourselves out. We just recently started working on putting up these H braces. Um, our property has a lot of hills and valleys, which we love, but didn't realize that because of those hills and valleys, you can't just set T posts um, all throughout or they'll pull up. So we are now going through the process of building. I think we have six, six or seven H braces we're gonna have along this side of the property. And then this fall, we're gonna come along with some T-posts and start putting in our fence. Now the other three quarters of this property actually does have some fence that runs along the back. It's pretty old and dilapidated. It's just some old tree posts, tree stumps that they used as posts and some old barbed wire. That barbed wire for the most part has fallen down and it's gonna need to be rebuilt. We don't have any animals out here yet since we're not living here, but that will definitely be another project that gets done sooner than later. We actually, since purchasing our property, have found out that my brother and sister-in-law are actually the ones who have purchased the second lot that's closest to us. So that's pretty awesome to know that we will have family living next to us. I can only imagine that'll be a huge benefit in the future when we're all out here, especially if we have gardens and animals. Uh, I know when you have a homestead, it's kind of hard to be able to step, take a step back from your property and get vacations and things like that. So having family that's right next door to us, I can only imagine is gonna be such a blessing for both of us so that when we do need those breaks, we can get away and know that our animals and our gardens are being taken care of in the same way that we would have taken care of them if we were here. Back here is one of our kids' favorite spots right now. Um, they like to be able to come back here and hide and get out of the sun when they want to. There was left, they had left a bunch of hay bales. We have since used those for some gardening projects and mulch around the property, but they would play back here and act as if it was their fort and they just absolutely love having this little hangout area. We can't wait to get a big tire swing or some kind of a swing that we can hook on this and allow them to have a fun area where they can just come and play and hang out and really start to fall in love with this place. This tree is huge and just beautiful. When my husband and I were walking the back of this property, 
we actually came across a bunch of different things that we found growing, which has really been an adventure. Every time we come out, it's fun for the kids and I to walk the property, see if there's anything new that we see. Um, Google Lens has really become our friend. We use that to really help us determine what it is that we have growing out here. But this plant right here in particular, it's growing up an old fence that we have over here. You can kind of see the vining going on. And from what we can tell, it looks like it is some sort of grapevine. Um, there's been a couple of different ones, muscadine and then just a wild grape. I did not see any berries on it, but we did not purchase our property until the 1st of May. And so I don't know if there were berries on this at some point, but we also had a late frost around here. So it very well could have had something on it. Um, and they just didn't make it through through that late frost that we had. Um, the back of this property was full of these wild sunflowers. It's so fun to come out here and see them. We back up to a railroad track and unfortunately this overgrown area is on their side of the property, the counties or the railroads property. And right after we had purchased this land, they had come through and done a burn not sure what it was there must have been a noxious weed that they were trying to kill off but it ended up burning over into our property look at those beautiful flowers and you can see that this post right here it was completely burned and so was all of the grass on our property it did really good for the ground but it also caught a huge um spruce tree over here on fire and what we came to find out was it also caught on fire this huge uh, thicket of sand plums. You can see it didn't end up regrowing any on this back side. Um, so I'm not sure if that's going to come back in the spring. We haven't taken it out because I'm still holding out hope. The spruce tree was starting to grow back, but there is thickets all along this property. This is the north side of our property and it is covered in this huge, let me step back, this huge sand plum. I'm going to call it a thicket. <laughs> I'm sure there's a tree in there, but it has just continued to spread and spread and spread. Now this year, we only got two <laughs> sand plums off of it. Again, we had that late frost. And from what I've read, sometimes sand plums do not fruit year after year. So I'm hoping that this next year we can have some sand plums because my brother-in-law has made some amazing sand plum jelly and I would love to be able to harvest and produce that off of our own property. So if you have any ideas on um, sand plums, if you know anything about them, could you leave that down below? Let me know. Do you think that that dead area will come back from the burn or should we cut that out? And is it true that sometimes you won't get a fruiting year on your sand plums? Because I am completely new to this and while I love doing research, I find that generally asking folks that have them or have been familiar with them either in their childhood or currently generally can give me a better, a better idea of what to expect from this. Walking down the rest of the north side of our property, we just have some random trees, um, some dead trees that we've been waiting to cut out. It has just been so hot here. We were waiting until fall hit so that it wouldn't just zap all that we had out of us on the weekend. So there's some more dead area and I'm really not sure if those are suckers in the middle that are growing out of that dead area, but all of this will be coming down this fall. So I'm excited to see inside of there and see what it looks like afterwards. Um, we have this huge area over here. We have some goldenrod, which I'm super excited to see is out here. If you're not familiar with goldenrod, from what I have heard is goldenrod is loved by bees. And in the future, I would love to have some bees out here so we can harvest some honey from. So seeing that, that it's growing wild and native out here is awesome. I also believe it has medicinal purposes. Um, Again, I've never done anything with it. Most of the ones that I see in the nurseries are ornamental and I believe you generally don't use those for medicinal purposes. Um, we also have a bunch of, I think it's Johnson grass, 
we've been mowing it down but this area drops off back here into like a little creaked area and so we don't really go too far back in that we're gonna have to get something to trim that down because it's very invasive and we do not want that we do not want that on the property you can also see in the ground we have a lot of big holes i am not quite sure what goes in and comes out of those holes nor do i really want to find out right now but i'm hoping that soon when we're out here we will see less and less of those on the main body of our property and that hopefully they'll move into the wooded area that we have um, i'm afraid they might be foxes or something like that and i really do not want to bring out some guineas and chickens and rabbits and end up having them all eaten out here um this is the very back side of our property now and one of my favorites it sits in this little cove or valley it's tree lined and we actually have started really working this area the most um i love gardening and it has been a dream of mine for years. I have a small garden in our city lot, but it has been a dream of mine to be able to grow and produce as much of the foods that we eat and can them for the next year so that we can use less and less um, from the grocery store and really just shop our own backyard, which is awesome. So we started setting up an orchard and I've never had an orchard before. At home, I have a couple of blackberry plants but currently we have set up two trellis systems. I believe we have 12 blackberries planted in the ground. I just got those at the local nursery. I'm not sure if they'll fruit next year, but hopefully their second year, I believe they're bi biennial plants so that they, are, they will produce a cane next year and then fruit the following year. And then I have two 16 foot beds and these beds have um, blueberry plants in them. I can't wait to be able to come out here and pick blueberries and blackberries from this part of the orchard. This one has a tarp over it. It's a mesh tarp. We have a lot of deer activity out here and my big concern is that the deers will come and try to rub up on here. So we purchased this, this netting from, I want to say Orschlands or Tractor Supply. And we're using that as a way to keep the deer from being able to rub and knock them over or eat their leaves. Now the sides are exposed and rain is able to get in through there. So that's beneficial. They won't be missing out on any of the rains or winds that we, or rains and snows that we get around here. And then that's the last blackberry bed currently. And then I have these five trees. They're teeny tiny. There are fig trees. Honestly, I am so excited for these. We had to put cages around them again. Our tree row is right there and it is a thick, thick forested area. And there's a creek down there. So we have heavy, heavy activity over here with deer. So our biggest concern was just protecting our initial investment in this orchard. But it is gonna be seriously one of my favoriteest spaces on this property. We plan to put an additional five fruit trees on the other side of the blackberry um, bed. And in the center, I want to have a sitting area with some strawberry beds around it. And then in the back, we will repeat this whole setup. It'll have grapes and red raspberries. So super excited about that. And just recently, I purchased this. Thought it would be a nice way to invite all of the bee friends to come and help support and pollinate this new orchard well i hope you've enjoyed walking around our property today i can't wait to bring you along as we start really transforming this space we are getting ready to get some electricity brought out here we had to cut into our tree row which was sad but necessary and hopefully soon we'll have a well out here. Right now we have to trailer in all of the water to water all of those arborvitaes up there on the ridge and all of the fruit trees over here. Uh, but until next time, friends, we'll see you later. Bye.